Although EVs are the future of the automotive industry, there have been no positive trends in making EVs more affordable in the last couple of years. First, there was the hefty expense of building the EV, then there was the epidemic, and now there's a hostile environment to cope with. Elon Musk believes the goal of his Tesla and other electric car firms to roll out more affordable electric vehicles would be set back. And this time, there could be multiple reasons. One, the Russian and Ukraine war, and second, Biden's ridiculous double down on Green New Deals. How is the Russia-Ukraine conflict harming the EV sector? And why is Biden's promotion of transit to EVs a bad idea? Watch till the end to know answers to these questions. Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. Quick reminder that subscribing's free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. The Russia-Ukraine conflict has made supply chain fabrics quite weak. In the face of soaring gas costs, the administration of President Joe Biden is seeking to actively promote its long-term plan for a Green New Deal energy transformation. But drivers who watch their gas costs rise with each fill-up will be less than pleased with this approach. So there you have it. Right now, the biden harris buttigieg psaki answer to high gas costs is for all of you urban, suburban, and rural Americans to go out and get an electric vehicle right now. But the supply chain concerns that Buttigieg and the president stated would be resolved last September have not been addressed, which means that there are no EVs to purchase at the Ford, GM, Toyota, or any other carmaker lots at this time. That was six months ago. And here we go again. To cope with rising gas prices in recent days, President Joe Biden has asked Saudi Arabia to pump more oil into the U.S. This means the administration would ask for greater oil imports from any country in the world, but refuses to use oil from their own home oil sector in the U.S. For Team Biden, you know it's in trouble when Elon Musk is making fun of its ridiculous green-obsessed enthusiasm. That's right. Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who got his billions off the greening of America through his electric car firm, is now slamming the Biden administration's unrealistic ambition. Considering that Musk is renowned for his outspokenness, it comes as no surprise that he's now slamming Team Biden's newest green gimmick, the idea that we should instantly ditch our gas-guzzling cars in favor of the supposedly affordable electric vehicles supplied by Tesla and, increasingly, the mainstream automotive industry. That said, it has surprised many to see that even financial professionals who have endorsed the Green Revolution, such as Larry Fink, the chairman and CEO of money management behemoth BlackRock, are increasingly recommending caution in making the rapid transition to a green economy, which includes the quick adoption of electric cars. They predict that the results will be rapid inflation, even at a faster rate than what we're already seeing. Due to the high expenses connected with energy use, it'll impose a significant tax on the poor and working class who would be forced to pay more to get to work and eat. Given that oil prices are rising to $150 a barrel and gas prices are heading into $8 a gallon territory in certain areas due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it's the last thing that the nation needs at this time. It's frightening to think that such words of warning haven't penetrated the thick skulls of officials in D.C. And it's clearly evident from Vice President Kamala Harris and Transport Secretary Pete Buttigieg had a weird press briefing recently in which they declared that soon every automobile will be clean and electric and that this would rescue the globe, though they didn't mention the name Vladimir Putin. While Tesla enthusiasts might rejoice in the fact that they'll no longer be required to pay for expensive gas, they'll not be completely spared from hefty expenditures. According to a tweet from Elon Musk on March 14, his electric vehicle company Tesla 
and space exploration company SpaceX have been under quote-unquote significant recent inflation pressure in raw materials and logistics. Tesla has increased the pricing of select models in the US and China by more than $1,000 and $1,500 respectively last week. Musk went on to remark that Tesla was not alone in its battle to keep pricing pressures under control, referring to a recent report that said Russia's invasion of Ukraine had brought commodities prices to their highest levels since 2008. Rivian, a Tesla rival, hiked their prices earlier this month as well, but was forced to lower them when consumers and investors expressed dissatisfaction. While Rivian didn't directly blame the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, it did state that supply chain restrictions caused by increased raw material prices might result in a reduction in output. The epidemic had already wreaked havoc on the supply networks of automobile manufacturers. The war is only making things worse. Take for example Tesla's lithium-ion batteries, which are made mostly of nickel. Russia is the world's largest producer of nickel, accounting for approximately 10% of global production. Since the beginning of the war, the price of the metal has risen dramatically. For a short period on March 8, three-month LME nickel futures contracts briefly exceeded the $100,000 per metric ton threshold, prompting the London Metal Exchange to suspend trading for the time being. Prices have dropped since they peaked at almost $3,700 per metric ton earlier this month, but they remain high. Russia is the world's second biggest supplier of aluminum, after only China. Prices of other important raw materials, such as steel and palladium, have been increasing as well. If the situation does not improve quickly, automakers may go to China for production. Due to the restrictions, China will have access to lower-cost Russian nickel, which will allow it to remain more competitive in the global battery metal market. Of course, electric vehicles have enormous potential, but they're not likely to become widely available tomorrow, or perhaps next year, or maybe even in the next five years. The reason for this is simple. They are just too costly for the typical individual. The average cost is around $56,000. And electricity doesn't just appear out of thin air, it's produced by the wasteful combustion of dreaded fossil fuels or by wind turbines. You'll need nuclear power to ramp up capacity to fulfill the fictitious capacity demands of the vice president. And how many nuclear power plants would the environmentalists in charge of the Biden administration really allow to be built? Batteries are also used to power electric cars. Those batteries depend on minerals such as nickel, lithium, and cobalt, all of which are refined in China, which has emerged as a major producer. As a result, China has risen to become the world's leading maker of electric vehicle batteries. The US may be able to become less reliant on Russian oil, but more reliant on China's cobalt. Analysts believe that Democrats are blissfully unaware of the reality that their green revolution must be seen as an evolutionary process. If you don't trust the analysts, then listen to Musk, the king of the electric car. In a recent tweet, Musk stated that while, Obviously, this would negatively affect Tesla, but sustainable energy solutions simply cannot react instantaneously to make up for Russian oil and gas exports. The investing trend known as ESG, or Environmental Social Governance, which is pressuring corporations to embrace everything green, including electric vehicles, has been twisted to insanity, according to Musk, who believes it should be scrapped altogether if it cannot be corrected. This is good advice. Unfortunately, Team Biden will not listen. But hey, let us know what you think about all this. Biden on one hand wants to double down on EV, but on the other hand will not take Tesla for what it is. Francis Q says he favors the UAW aka Union, because UAW believe EV cars will reduce the labor workforce, compared to ICE cars who have many complexity of parts to build and will help keep the labor force at large. But it's time to innovate 
and move forward. EVs are the future. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing still free and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.